My name is Erin Coe, and um, I've been playing D&D since about 2005, and my first campaign was published in 2007. Since I've started playing more, I've come to realize that there's one rule that no rule book has ever really explained. <clears throat> you are your own worst critic. Sometimes you want to be something that other people don't like, but you won't be able to because nobody else will be watching you. <clears throat> this is my very first shiny angel review, so please bear with me while I write out all my thoughts. I got to learn shiny angel from the Super Junior Group's shiny angel website, so I must say my thoughts. I was completely excited when I saw it. There is no doubting it, I have seen many fantastic idols on the site, but I am now one of many who is excited to see how the talented group's shiny angel will perform. <clears throat> I should mention, this is a new story. It's a spin-off book. You can choose your own characters and choose to read either. Please feel free to tell me if you find any faults with either. And note that there are also many much more detailed reviews. So don't get offended. We want to know the plot of this. I'll also post the chapter link for each update here. I have fed the very first part of every slide into slide eight, then slid it through slide three and slid it through slide two, and now have four or five slides. And have just one more slide. What I mean by that is, there's no way all slides fit into my fingers. There should be more than one slide, and when I flip the slide on its axis, uh, the left corner may fall out of the slot into the slot when I move it, but as soon as I move back to the old slot, there should not be any problems. <clears throat> I believe that technology is an important part of our society. We think about how to make it better, she added. We don't see it as necessarily an evil system because we think it makes things better and we use our technology intelligently when we should have been using our hands. So we think that we can make it better. I also spend a lot of time watching film, reading, making comics, and watching comics. My most recent book is written by myself and has been nominated for three national awards, including the Hugo Award for Best Related Work. It is currently available for pre-order on the House Frey Bookstore, Amazon, or Barnes & Noble. To that effect, I have invited Mr. Ron to visit Delhi for a day while I'm in meeting the National Technical Commission for ITC, NTCI. His office has confirmed the attendance at the hotel. Icarus is a classic and classic American cartoon, and it was created by Charles Schultz, the creator of the Flintstones, and based on the classic comic strip and song, The Flintstones, which premiered on PBS during that week, a story set in an old railroad depot. This classic cartoon is the subject of my latest book, How to Read a Comic Book, and it's fun and easy, it's a fun and easy read. It'll show you not only how to draw every character on every page, but the comic conventions that make them special in the first place. So without further ado, here's your first look at the Flintstones famous opening line from How to Read a Comic Book, A Guide to Masterful Cartoons by Charles C. Schultz. Girl power is what they call them. It basically says that in your brain you can do anything, but you can't do it. That means you can see objects that you've never seen before. I'm sure it looks cool. You can look at things with your eyes that have no eyes. The last time I looked at this, there were some strange and beautiful plants growing up on the side of the mountain. I want to get that. I want to get that. Oh, crap. What's going on down there? Oh, no. There's no way I've got it. How am I getting up again? Don't stop. Don't stop. Why is it so difficult to reach down? Did that really touch anything? I don't care if we didn't have the glasses. If that were to happen, we'd still see them. I feel the sun and I feel the earth beneath our feet. That feeling keeps on going until we reach the edge of the forest. I've never actually been inside a tree. I'm afraid. Thank you for your attention and for your time and for the respect you have shown to me. I am happy my mom had a chance to know about it and come to know about it on Facebook. In light of such a recent incident, I mean, I know some folks won't believe, but for me, it's been a great learning experience.
And I think I have a tiny bit of time if anybody has a question, or you can just come ask me WTF later. Yes, you, miss? So what Did I flip through that, that slide too quickly? <laughs> um, it's part of OpenAI, which is an open source, and somebody just basically released a really user-friendly um, interface to play with it. And this is something that I've been interested in and trying to play with, which is like a dialogue between humans and, and machine learning um, that's both performative and kind of improv improvisational and offers different layers of narrative and kind of opens uh, a question up to who's controlling the narrative and who do we want to control the narrative. In, in case uh, you missed it, the question from the audience was, what algorithm wrote your talk? Uh, time for a couple more questions. Anyone? No. How long did it train you know for? I don't know that. <laughs> but you know, um, I'm sure it's all posted. You should definitely go and visit his talk to Transformer. He has all the info there, and uh, it's pretty sweet. It's like very, very nice. It's very condensed, and yeah. So. Do, do. Did, uh, sure. So speaking of narratives, what's your feeling about the mass media narrative in this uh, country? Um, I would love to have um, OpenAI answer that question, actually. Um, I think we have a second. Can I have my phone on me? You said you, you wanted to know about the um, Narrative in the mass media. Okay, just give me one second. Erin is asking OpenAI the I question. Am. Yeah, the service is really bad in here. Oh my God. The promise of technology, you guys. <laughs> my eternal frustration. Are you on the network? I'm on the network. Well, I mean, it would probably say something really strange and something that would make me sound like I was supposed to be on medication. <laughs> Last night, it, I was actually like going through it really late at night, putting in different um, starts to the sentences. And it, it was getting very poetic and very weird and creeping me out. And I had to stop, actually. And it started throwing more and more captures at me, which was amazing. Anyway, my time's up. I'm getting a red screen. So thank you, you guys.